I don't know if you guys know this about me, but I like video games, kind of a lot. <laughs> and I think I wanna start making my own. Don't worry, the YouTube channel's not going anywhere. YouTube will always remain king. I love making funny, informative videos the most. And even during this process while making games for two weeks, I started to like really miss making videos. <laughs> but making games is something that I really wanna invest my time in on the side. And I'm not trying to start like a large scale studio right away. I'm not trying to put the cart in front of the horse. I don't, even, I don't even have a cart, I'm just a horse with a YouTube channel. That being said, if this horse continues to flourish on YouTube and get a bunch of views, then I might wanna start looking for a cart with a couple of game devs to pull around. This analogy's weird. I've also noticed while making videos about video games, there is a couple of pain points that I keep running across, which is as I'm critiquing developers' work, I feel a little bit of guilt about the fact that I don't participate in this medium. I don't make video games. And I'm not saying that you need to make video games to have a good opinion about them. You don't need to make your own wine to be a sommelier. Yes, I know a little bit of French. You don't need to step on grapes to know that the wine tastes good. But I bet if you stepped on them grapes, you would have a broader, better understanding of what goes into it. So before we talk about my attempt to learn Unreal in two weeks, I do want to bring up kind of like a dream thing for mainly my subscribers. So if you don't really care or if you're new to the channel, you can just skip to this part in the video where I actually like start the process. The main reason why I want to make games is selfishly, conceitedly, I think I have really good ideas for video games. And I also feel like I've gathered like a lot of random tool sets in my life that kind of feel like it's building towards this. I was a graphic designer for nine years. I didn't go to college. I worked in teams pretty much that entire career. I've played thousands and thousands of hours of video games and I clearly love them. And now the craziest thing is I make a living talking about what's good and bad about them. I think I'm a decent communicator. I'm working really hard on that listening part. We'll get there. I've been drawing since I was five, mainly wannabe concept art and creating videos has taught me so much with just like the deep process from beginning to end, from conceptualization to like final product. It's taught me how to like follow my instinct and where to cut the fat in a video. Even if I really love something, you just, you can just feel that it's not working. And most importantly, every day that I've thought about realistically making a game studio and making my own games, I'm extremely excited and passionate about it. Like I really, really want to do this. I also have you guys, my subscribers, my audience. If I'm developing a game, I can have you guys test it and give me feedback about it. And you guys are an audience that hopefully, if I were to launch a game, you would also buy it. Or maybe that's helping me with like a GoFundMe if I don't want to get a publisher and we just like raise the money ourselves. It's a lot to think of. It's a big dream and it's going to take time. So you might be wondering what kind of video games would I want to make? And I thought really hard about this and kept it pretty high level, which is I want to make third person co-op not turn-based, no offense, Baldur's Gate, adventure games. I know that might sound kind of open-ended, but that's intentional. I don't want to like shut down different ideas. I want to have people comfortably collaborate in the early stages. The main inspirations for the game would be games like Valheim and Risk of Rain 2, both made by very small teams. I think Risk of Rain 2 is made by three people, Valheim by five. And I want to be realistic here. I'm not trying to make the next Skyrim right away. Even Valheim, I think, is way too big of an idea for like our first game. High level, I picture that the studio would make like two overwhelmingly positive reviewed Steam games at first. Then we take a big swing for our third game where maybe we try like the balls type game that I was talking about in my Bannerlord video. I just want to under promise and over deliver and learn a million different lessons while making our first couple of games. Then we can really go for it and just like shatter the entire video game landscape with our unbelievable game. Like I said, this is gonna take a long time. This is gonna take years. And that's the reason that I wanna start now. I'm 27, I turn 28 in a month. And before I'm 30, I wanna get this game studio started. And yes, I do have a name for the studio that we will reveal once we're working on our first project that we can announce. Also, if this idea and concept like genuinely excites you and you wouldn't hate working with me, <laughs> I'm actually gonna set up an email so you guys can reach out to me because I'm definitely interested in working with people. Send me an email at jacksatherstudio at gmail.com. I think the first people I would need to bring on board is somebody that really knows Unreal Engine, just like a general game developer and the next person would be somebody that's a really good 3D modeler. If you're one of those two things and have experience, definitely send me an email. But if you're not, but you're just still super excited about this idea and want to get involved, still send me an email and tell me about what you're feeling and what you wanna do. 
Something about the studio is like, if it ends up being something where like people can come and work and have like full-time salaries and stuff, I want every single person there to be thrilled to be working at the studio. I want people to love the work that they do and really feel like they're a part of building something that is actually gonna have an impact in the world. That's something that I feel like was missing my entire graphic design career. Also, I can offer you no money <laughs> at the beginning of this. <laughs> this is a free endeavor. I'm just surviving on YouTube right now. I've just recently started my second life and Taxes are coming up, which yes, I know I should do them quarterly, whatever. Who knows, this might just cut my whole YouTube career off at the knees. <laughs> the other reason why I wanna start now is because there is no better time in history to learn game design. Indie games are blowing AAA games out of the water. Like didn't like Lethal Company outsell Call of Duty for like months? That game was made by one guy. Virtually all the software to make these games now is free. Unreal Engine, Godot, Blender, uh, Cascader, all the software is free for us to use. There's hundreds of hours of free tutorials on YouTube and things inside the engines themselves are getting so accessible. Like in Unreal, you, you don't even need to know like technical code anymore. You just need to know the visual scr uh, scripting blueprint method, which I gotta say is a little oversold as being like super easy to understand. It's still hard if you don't know code, but it is much more easy to learn than having to learn like a whole coding language from the ground up. It's just crazy when you listen to like old game devs talk about learning code like Todd Howard building his first games on the Apple II, which is basically making a game on the freaking Fallout 3 terminal. And if you're not an artist, like there's so much free assets out there now and like good cheap assets online in the Unreal Marketplace. Like in Quixel Bridge, you have all their free mega scans of like everything you can picture outside, leaves, trees, rocks, grass, shit, like everything. There's just no excuse to find to not get into game design today. So I did, and I spent the last two weeks trying to figure this thing out. All right, so let's get into it. First of all, I wanna say if you're a real game designer and you're actually watching this video, if you have any tips or constructive criticism on how I learned things or advice for newbies that are getting into this, your comments are more than welcome and appreciated. Comment down below. My plan for the two weeks was constant exposure. Unreal Engine is an intimidating program and I just wanted to live in it for two weeks straight. And by the way, any tutorials that I found really useful, I'm gonna include in the link in the description. There should be a bunch of them. And I began where most of us do, which is going straight Straight now to the master of Lance Unreal Lance. Sensei. Arigato gozaimasu. This five hour long tutorial is the most viewed learning Unreal video out there and it's for good reason. This is a beast of a video with a ton of great information and the teacher is amazing. Full transparency, I actually watched this Unreal Sensei video last year at some point, but I feel like I've kind of forgotten most of it. So I started with it on this journey of making my own game and my descent into madness. The first thing I did was I wrote out a list of what I could realistically do in a matter of two weeks as a complete newbie. So I came up with make a third person world, make a small environment, have grass, trees, etc. Maybe add fog if we're feeling crazy. Create a Viking character or just have a character in Unreal Engine work. Possibly create a physics ponytail because physics rule and so do ponytails. Create an enemy, implement those characters, create an ax, have swing animations like a top and a swipe chop. Keep combat simple, have a damage system, but that's the whole list. I think I could do that in two weeks, right? I started Unreal Sensei's video and a lot of the basics kind of came back to me pretty quick. Like you can set up the lighting system in a game and just feel like a god right away, just commanding the sun with a simple hotkey. In that tutorial, you're also introduced to Quixel Bridge that has a bunch of mega scans, which are basically super high quality assets that you can import into your game free of charge. And this is also my introduction to my first problem, which I'm just gonna call over downloading. Basically while learning something, they would teach you about like how to import a certain asset and I'll be like, I got it. And then instead of like the tutorial saying download three or four and just get started, I'll be like, let me go download everything that would possibly be in my world and just spending hours in Quixel Bridge getting every single asset that I think I'll ever need when I'm trying to make this tiny little game. I, you just heard my list. In reality, I should have just gotten two or three and just kept it moving. I finished up my first day cruising through the tutorial until I realized that I kind of wanted to get a different volumetric clouds and skybox in the background. But here is where my second problem, my second big personal issue comes into play, which is as soon as I started to look up a tutorial on YouTube about this, the recommended page on YouTube for an ADD, possibly I've never been diagnosed, brain of mine gets so distracted distracted at looking at anything on the recommended page. It's an absolute war zone fighting for my attention. Of course I want to see Mark Rebier's apartment. Get the f out of bed, bitch, go. 
I kept watching the Unreal Sensei video and once he got to like putting into mountains, for some reason my brain was like, some fog will look good on the mountains and I'm pretty sure I saw a tutorial about that. So I went to YouTube and immediately got distracted again and <laughs> watched a 15 minute long video on black holes from Epic Spaceman. Go watch it, it is actually so awesome. Then I watched a video about Biden being an NPC from Skyrim. Hello. Then I watched a girl get 5 million views for a cat slightly grazing her breasts. Oh, that's awesome. I love putting in so much effort into my videos. And then I watched about 20 more videos after that and then played a couple of games of TFT because apparently I play that now. Then I decided I was exhausted from all that work and decided to take a break. Then I came back and then I finished up Unreal Sensei's tutorial. Pat yourself on the back since this was a lot of work. And then I called it a day. I had finished Unreal Sensei's tutorial, but I, like I said, I did it last year, so I didn't implement all of the stuff that he did. So by day three, I had a floor. <clears throat> so I decided to actually start doing his tutorial and added in some mountains. Then I added a plugin called Interactive World, which is actually like a super awesome plugin that can make your game look super triple-A. It can make you have like mud footprints and like push things around in the snow. And most importantly, it has interactive foliage that your character can touch that I was about to put down. Unfortunately, the guy doesn't really explain that well how to put it into your game. And apparently he just made this plugin because he was trying to find a job. But it's a pretty popular plugin, so I decided to look up some tutorials on it. And this is the third problem that I've run into. There's like no proper tutorials on this plugin. And I'm not blaming the plugin. I'm actually talking about Unreal Engine 5 in general is such a new software, Unreal Engine 5 specifically, that there's actually a lot of missing tutorials out there. I tried to find a lot of stuff on interactive foliage in just like any way that it could be implemented. And I got sent down a bunch of different rabbit holes with a lot of errors and things not working properly. Yeah, I wasn't thinking about foliage that you can pick up. I was talking about foliage that you could push around. I just want to put this out there. If you really know game design and Unreal Engine 5, you could start a huge channel and make a ton of money explaining this stuff to people on YouTube. So something that I recognized early on and was just like blatantly obvious and disgusting was the grid lines and texture repetition on my floor. And I wanted to solve this before putting in foliage. And I knew that there was a way to solve this. So I went to YouTube, got distracted again because I saw that Shane Gillis is hosting SNL in February. If I ever get on SNL, I will butt Dwyer. I'll be like, live from my mouth this fucking gun. <laughs> then I started watching some tutorials on how to fix the grass. I thought it was gonna be like a one button solution, but next thing I know I'm like studying micro and macro variations and textures. In the red channel of the result of the micro variation blend to drive the transition between the two variations. And when I thought I had it figured out, I tried implementing it into the game, but what do you know on like the last step, it just doesn't work for some reason. <laughs> Nothing fucking change. That has happened to me a lot in Unreal Engine. That kind of stuff and stuff like I follow a tutorial to a T, but for some reason a tool shows up on their screen and it doesn't show up on mine. The texture repetition problem would just not go away. I tried to fix this for a while. I tried to fix this for hours. I tried to fix this for the next two full days. On day five, I finally found a solution. Turns out I should have done Unreal Sensei's tutorial because his auto landscape brush comes with a feature that's called cell bombing that basically takes any natural texture and completely randomizes it on textures and seamlessly makes it so it all combines together so all the grid lines disappear. You can't do this with like a brick texture because it cuts it up, but with any natural asset, it works extremely well. I tossed the material onto my grass and started painting and things were starting to look pretty dang good. Pretty dang good for just a floor by day five. At this time, I was frustrated that I was still walking around as like the normal mannequin and I wanted to start adding in my own character. And I heard about MetaHuman and I was wondering like, does that actually apply to a little indie game dev like this? And so I decided to give it a shot. And yes, MetaHuman is freaking awesome. I'm surprised that you make your character through like a browser. It seems pretty intense for that, but I loved making my character. It's super intuitive and easy to learn. I made my character in like under an hour and that's me being a total nut job when it comes to creating characters. I love the character that I made and he's just chock full of detail and like Blizzard cinematic level ready. <laughs> I wasn't sure how much my game would need this level of detail. So I put him into a game, which is, you know, you have to go look up another tutorial about how to do that because nothing explains it. Put him into my game doing a simple retargeting method and that seemed to work pretty well, actually. Look at that, I got him walking around in the sunlight. It's beautiful. He looks a little blurry from where the camera's at, but this felt very awesome. It felt awesome to actually start progressing into making a game. I actually got to talk about that for a second, which is progress in making a game because I definitely didn't give myself enough of this early on. And I started becoming extremely discouraged at this point for what I had made so far, which was 
a floor. It was my fault. It was my arrogance and perfectionism that got in the way and wanted to skip ahead to exactly what I wanted to put into the game and make sure it's perfect before moving on to the next step. When you're learning something, and I gotta get better at this, when I'm learning something, I gotta get better at realizing when to move on. Things are definitely not gonna be perfect when you get started. And if you start fixating on these small little issues, you're gonna go down rabbit holes just like me for hours and hours. It makes you feel like you're wasting your time. Even though in the end, I don't think you really are, but it will feel discouraging. If I had just followed a tutorial again, like Gorka's first game, I would have felt so much more satisfied and encouraged because of how much I could have progressed with just a little bit of guidance. So I found the updated version of Unreal Sensei's landscape brush and started implementing it into the game. I also started watching the part of this tutorial going over virtual textures, which is basically putting textures on your assets that blend into the landscape below it. I hugged Ralphie for some much needed comfort in my journey so far, and little did I know that I was about to start losing my mind. Oh. I started watching some Prismatica dev videos, which are really great. He's a phenomenal presenter, and he has a lot of videos and now his own plugin on interactivity in game worlds. And I wanted to know more about it. So I started watching a bunch of his videos. His stuff is pretty high level, and I came into my next mistake that I made, which is trying to understand information like I'm drinking water out of a fire hose. Prismatica is providing great information, but a noob like me does not need to be this into the weeds yet. Which once again, I am at the level of just having a f***ing floor. I watched a bunch of his videos and then I ended up just calling it a day, completing our first week. There's no way I can make a game in just a week. I started the day deciding to start over and actually use the updated landscape brush, effectively this time. Then I got distracted and watched Geneva Villeneuve interview Christopher Nolan, which was extremely interesting. Those guys are masters of the craft. I was about to start laying down some foliage, but then I thought, Wait, what if I just go back to Prismatica Dev's videos and just buy his plugin for his interactive world and just throw it into my game? I know how to do that, right? So I bought it and then I joined his Discord and I started looking at like the people that have been using this and it's, uh, it's crazy the results that people are getting from using this plugin, it's awesome. I started watching the tutorials on how to put it into your own game, but it's not a straightforward process. So as a newbie, I just got kind of overwhelmed and I ended up just putting it off to the side saying, I'll figure it out later after I'm not making a video about how to make a game in two weeks. After that, for some reason, I watched my favorite scene from Notting Hill, which is, I guess how I felt after scrapping all of my work so far, which was just a floor. Then I kept over downloading, but eventually I started downloading trees, which is a big step. And after that, I ended up going plugin shopping for some reason, which I will say there is one good thing that came out of this. And that is if you're willing to spend money, the best bane for your buck, I think universally, tell me if I'm wrong or not, but is a thing called UDS, Ultra Dynamic Skies. And I wasn't gonna spend any money for this video, but come on, man, I hadn't gotten anything done. <laughs> it's crazy, it adds any weather effect you can possibly think of into your game seamlessly. And it's highly customizable, whether it's rain, snow, thunderstorm, dust storm, sandstorm, lightning, clouds, different skies, Aurora Borealis, Aurora Borealis, like I said, I speak French, whatever, the Northern Lights, stars, and everything is just so high quality. Most of the things have sounds included. And with everything that I put into the game, it seemed to perform actually really well. This plugin that I paid money for really made me feel like I was starting to get somewhere, especially with those trees. Look at those trees. That's not just a floor, that's a forest. But of course, for whatever reason, it just didn't work whenever I started actually playing the game. The UDS would just turn off on this game alone. I tried it on another project, worked fine. Then I started going over to a rock texture and for some reason it had a bunch of black squares all over it. I don't know why the hell that happened, but I had to fix that too. I started to fix it and then I eventually just got a headache and went to bed. I started day eight, scrapping my world again <laughs> because UDS and the f***ing rock textures wouldn't work. I started making the game just using Unreal Sensei's principles. I started laying down some mountains, definitely started over downloading again, but this time it's, it's for a reason. It's because I'm gonna make the game this time. I've only got a week left, but I actually made a landscape that I legitimately liked. I started making progress until I decided to start working on the virtual textures. So I was trying to get my assets to just melt into the floor and match the landscape they were above. I I added in the two runtime virtual textures that you need to incorporate it and boom, 90% of my landscape disappeared. I do not know why, I still don't know why. If you know why, please, for the love of God, tell me. This, this is where I started to crack. <sighs> why, 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 how, why, what, it, what, why, how, why? Oh, oh. 
What? Why? Like literally like everything works fine. Even to the point where I can do this. This yeah. like next step or whatever. I'm like, oh great, it works. It's like great, awesome. <sighs> this makes my fucking blood boil. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, why? Luckily, I had Ralphie beside me who was able to comfort me in my moments of absolute sheer rage. I tried to fix it for hours on end. I Googled everything. Like, just give me something. Unreal's Google sucks cock. There's never a solution. What the fuck? I looked at Unreal discussion forums. I even pretty sure I've like joined an Unreal Discord and That's asked if anybody could help me with this problem. Nobody got ah. back to me. And I just said, it. I have to leave. I had to go out that night. I started day nine thinking, I need a clean slate. <sighs> I was running out of time to make a game, so I was like, okay, I should just follow a big tutorial and take a game from start to finish, then customize from there and make it my own. Get out of town. Jordan Peterson interviewed more plates, more dates, Derek. Then I was like, well, if I'm gonna do that, I should probably make my own character first. <laughs> That's a stupid idea, Jack. So I started drawing my own. I started looking at references. My favorite place to go is ArtStation. It's, I love ArtStation. It's crazy what will inspire you. Like I found this one image that I found to be so intriguing and it made me start thinking of a smaller game that I could make kind of based around the concept of what I felt in this image. It's funny cause this is like a fairly futuristic looking setting and I wanted to go more medieval, but I like love things like the setting. I was thinking about like a storm and a foggy kind of setting and I could easily make that with UDS. And I like that beacon looking thing where the ground looks really healthy around it. And it made me start thinking about what the actual game part of the game would be. Like what if you're a winter Viking with a two handed hammer and you're caught in a blizzard and all you see is this vague beacon of light in the distance. And once you get to it, you realize it's like this giant green glowing rock with grass around it. And if you smash it with your hammer, the rock crumbles and it heals you and the grass around you dies. But in the distance, another glow appears and you have to go to that one next. But on your way to that one, ice cannibal things start coming out and trying to kill you on your way to it. And every time you get to a new beacon, the journey to the next one becomes harder and harder until you get to the 10th one and you like, I don't know, ascend to a Valhalla or something like that. Seems simple enough, right? Right? Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. I had a floor at this point. I can't make this in a week, but I decided it was worth a shot. I ended up starting to make my character in Blender, another program that I had little to no experience in. I also discovered that you could download 3D models from Sketchfab at this point and started over downloading like crazy on all the characters that were going to be in my small game. It was 10 days into making my game and I had gotten virtually nowhere. But for some reason, I was still optimistic in an insane kind of way. Today is the day I make a video game. <laughs> Something you can play. From the fateful day when stinking bits of slime first crawled from the sea and shouted to the cold stars, I am man. Our greatest dread has always been the knowledge of our own morality. But tonight we shall hurl the gauntlets of science into the frightful face of death itself. Tonight we shall ascend into the heavens. We shall mock the earthquake. We shall command the thunders and penetrate into the very womb of impervious nature herself. And we'll be able to play it. It's uh, it's gonna be a fun time. I got a zombie mesh and put him into Mixamo, which is a place where you can get free animations and characters from. And I ended up getting a bunch of different animations for this zombie that, spoiler alert, I never used and over downloaded the crap out of them for hours. But I also found on Sketchfab, my character, the character that I would wanna play as. Unfortunately, he had a bunch of like weapons on the side. So I had to figure out in Blender how to be able to take those off. And I actually managed to do this. And then I ended up finding a free program called AccuRig that automatically rigs your characters once you have a few points set up. And that seemed to work. I'm not sure how well AccuRig works with Unreal, but it did allow me to get an FBX file where I could put into Cascader to make my own idle animation and walking animation. <laughs> 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 oh, I suck. <laughs> And this begins day 11, which I worked on this game for 15 hours straight. <laughs> From the moment I woke up to basically the moment I fell asleep. I put my character into Cascader and it looked good. I made an idle animation and it worked. That's so sick, bro. But I also realized that the cloak was gonna be an issue not moving properly and stuff. So I decided to take it off. One problem there though, taking off the cloak for this character 
also takes off his head. So I made a new head and figured out how to gorilla glue it on top of this model in Blender. I re-rigged it and put it back in a casketer to do my walk animation. And I started realizing if I'm gonna like walk and make an idle animation for this guy, he should also be holding something since I want a two-handed hammer. Unfortunately, to put your weapon in your game in casketer, that's a paid part of casketer. So I was just gonna have to eyeball it. And the way I was gonna eyeball it is to use reference. How do you get reference for free? You just do it yourself. As cringy as it sounds, I asked my girlfriend to film me standing and walking around and even sprinting yeah. like I was in a video game. <laughs> so I gotta do an idle, walk, run, sprint, slash, like three different slashes, okay? <laughs> this is so fucking cringe, here we go. <laughs> jump, I need to jump. You do. Oh gosh. I wouldn't do it under the fan. Yeah, come on, Jenna. Run, idle. Got it. Side, same one. Yeah. That was a sneezing animation. And you can stop. I think Thanks. everyone looks bad when they run. I look bad? Everyone does. Alex <laughs> <laughs> Dorky, are you watching things? Stop! <laughs> <laughs> That's adorable. Also, while getting these poses, I put a freaking hole in the wall. A slash is gonna be holding like this. Whoa. Did you dent the wall? That's okay. <laughs> but this was actually really useful. I also needed a weapon, which I ended up for some reason not choosing a hammer because I guess I couldn't find one, and I used a dragon glass battle axe. I got to work on my walk cycle, and Cascader is awesome. It's so intuitive and really fun to use, and there's even like AI capabilities to make things look super realistic. And I think the walk I made, as crippled as it looks, kind of fits the vibe I was looking for, but also makes me concerned about that reference was my walk. I had the walk cycle, but the big test was if this is actually gonna work in my game. And fortunately, thank the Lord, it actually somehow worked. And I even got a battle hack to like get into my hands. It all came together. I did discover that this animation process was actually like kind of my favorite process so far, which is a good sign because you have to add in a lot of animations into games. Then I tried to get the cape physics to work and that was just a process. And another thing that there's just not a lot of like efficient tutorials on in on YouTube for Unreal Engine 5. It's just, I just could not get this thing to work. But let's not focus on that. I actually got my guy to walk around and hold an ax and look cool. It was the first day where I fell asleep a little proud of myself. <laughs> it's crazy that I'm actually doing this. This is wild. Day 12 began with, surprise, surprise, over downloading once again. I wanted a new character without a cape this time and a Thompson for some reason, because <laughs> it was my favorite looking gun. I ended up finding a character that matched the Thompson and the setting that I was kind of like thinking and manipulating the game in my head. But again, I got to the physics part and he just kept exploding like a hot air balloon and just it just didn't work and that was a waste of a day. Day 13 the day before my last. I started the day by talking directly to the camera and getting some stuff off my chest. So I've been going crazy the past few days because I can't seem to get anywhere because I keep getting sidetracked on these things that are important to me, but I end up not making an actual playable experience. I would argue I haven't played a playable experience this entire time. So today we're gonna go through a tutorial that is strictly just making a game. It's five hours long and I think I'll learn a lot and I think I'll actually have something to play. So that was the plan. Just finish this one tutorial so at least I have something to show. But first, I know that tutorial doesn't cover how to put your own character into the game, so I gotta do it. So I wanted to simply add my own is a bad idea. Surprisingly, I actually got a character into the game, changed some colors on him, and he looked pretty decent moving around. Besides the oxygen tank on the back that looked like a wet black hot dog moving around. I followed this tutorial and worked on it for six hours and went a little crazy in the process. But check it out, after all that work, I had a guy shooting a gun. Oh, there we go. That's starting to feel like I'm actually making a game, dude. Fucking finally. <laughs> <laughs> that feels so good. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks pretty decent. Don't look at it from the side or see the floating magazine. That's, who cares? 
This was the last day and I tried to finish the tutorial by Mizzo Frizzo that I realized was six hours long. And I was following every step of the tutorial, but then I realized I'm just following every step of the tutorial. I'm not like even grasping these concepts. I was doing the thing that you should avoid while doing tutorials, which is just clicking wherever the teacher clicks. And so many parts of this project were just not going right. Things were breaking left and right. The physics asset, the holding of the gun, the character himself. Oh, I hate this. <laughs> <sighs> Arms deflated, unreal. Okay, I'm, I'm done. So that day I scrapped what I had and my time was up. So what I have to show is, drum roll please, Virtually nothing. <laughs> Hold the phone, we're not done here. Yes, this is the end of the two weeks, but I felt like I was doing you guys a disservice of not showing you the product of what I've learned over the past two weeks. So I decided to keep on going. So I spent the next two days starting from scratch and making my own game, doing my best to dodge all my past pitfalls and doing things the right fundamental way. I went back to that Viking game idea and here's what I made. for this one. Oh gosh, look at that line of them. <laughs> I'm gonna make them kill themselves. <laughs> Making this little thing, I feel like I'm about to do the pursuit of happiness. This one little moment is happiness. This one little game I made after the two weeks of just like ups and downs and torturous problems and problem solving, this makes up for all of it and much, much more. Because through this video, I thought I was failing the whole time. And I feel like it shows that failure isn't the only thing that failure is. I don't know, does that make sense? <laughs> I was learning the whole time and I knew that I could do this. I just needed one last shot. And I know it might not look like much, but I genuinely impressed myself by the end of this. Even though if I'm being honest, it's mainly just an extension of the Gorka Games first game tutorial. It's super rewarding and I can't wait to keep plunging deeper and deeper into Unreal Engine and go learn that Prismatica dev interactive system. And maybe in a few months or some big chunk of time, we'll come back and do this experiment again and see what else I've learned. I wanna give a personal thank you to all the YouTubers that are teaching game design and Unreal Engine for free. Unreal Sensei, Gorka Games, Thomas Brush, Prismatica dev. What you guys are doing is awesome and inspiring wannabe game devs like me to actually give this thing a real shot. So thank you. But thanks for all the support, guys. Uh, like I said, if you are interested in this concept and, and just like talking to me about game studio and game design stuff, uh, email me at jacksatherstudio at gmail.com. If you're a 3D artist or just really familiar with Unreal Engine, I would love to talk to you. I've also got merch that you guys can buy, Sather's Arcade, and a Patreon where you can have your name show up at the end of this video, like the ones that are happening right now. <laughs> so thanks, guys, for watching this video, uh, and thanks for supporting me, and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>